The new realities as dictated by the pandemic means that the industry is no longer oiled the way it used to be. Musicians have seen their usual big stages and multiple concerts disappear, taking with it a large chunk of the source of income for artists. Today, new outlets and platforms are working overtime to create new channels for content monetizing, including via digital streaming. We'll begin the program today by looking at the new world and new opportunities created in the music world to help us understand that now I am being joined via Zoom call by Chioma Onuchuku, the head of TuneCore West and East Africa. Many thanks for joining us, Chioma. So to get straight into it, it's been over a year since COVID changed the way we do things in the world. How do you feel that artists can capitalize from the new normal? So the thing now is, Yes, people might be going back into the studio to make music, but what you find is a lot of these artists, maybe their management or whatever it is, they hold, they hold a lot of them have home studios now, so they're able to make music at home. People are able to make music on their phone now. You know, you can even send those files, you know, with your phone. If you look closely since COVID hit, how many new music has come out out of Nigeria, just Nigeria alone? It didn't really stop anyone. You know, maybe it might have halted concerts, you know, um, touring, you know, going on tours and concerts internationally or even locally, but people are still making music. So that tells you, you know, ah, you can make your music on your phone. You don't have any excuse now. You can songwrite, you know, or buy, um, you know, songs from people who actually write music and things like that. But, and then you have the likes of the tune call where it's so easy for you to just distribute your music. You know, it's a tech platform. You don't need to be anywhere physically. You know, all you just have to do is just go on the website, subscribe to the service, whether you want to distribute a single or an album, you put music up there, indicate if you want it on all 150 plus streaming platforms, or you want it on a select few, or do you want it to come out at a certain period? You know, there is, it's, it's technology kind of just makes everything, you know, super easy, you know, and Kobe kind of made it very apparent that if you aren't, you know, um, you're not tech savvy or you aren't, um, um, you haven't, let's say, transformed your business, whatever it is to like digital, you're way behind. Well, the conversation around royalties and ownership has been very popular, especially here in Nigeria. And you guys are known for working a lot with independent artists. So tell us what is the market like for independent artists here and what are the benefits to being independent in Africa? I'm pretty sure everybody's kind of aware with how the music business was like 20 plus years ago, where the only way you can get your music on streaming platforms, we didn't even have a lot of streaming platforms back then, but the thing then was radio. And, you know, for you to basically get your music on radio or basically become like an established artist was you having to either have some form of a management or a label. And a lot of the times people get into those agreements with these, you know, bodies and they don't have a full understanding of what they're really signing away. So there's a lot of times they don't understand what they're, you know, getting themselves into. Um, so there's always this problem around revenue share or some complications along, ar along the line as, you know, the artist, you know, develops and becomes like, you know, a known artist in, you know, their various markets. So independent distribution, you know, comes into the picture where with a, if you're an independent artist, you are able to keep the rights to your music. So you own that, we, we don't do anything with it. So we just basically give you the opportunity or a platform. In our case, it's a technology platform for you to be able to subscribe to, and then you can distribute your music to over 150 music streaming platforms all over the world, from Spotify to Apple Music to you know Amazon Music, Google Play, wherever it is, you're able to do that, and you keep you know you keep the rights to your music, you keep 100% of your royalties, which is another big thing as well. You know, back to the point I was making about people not understanding agreements and deals that they get into, so. The beauty of, you know, our service and the value we provide is you have that option of whether you want to remain independent, you know, keeping 100% of everything and still have your music heard by your friends worldwide. And Chioma, lastly, and a bit on a more personal note, you are one of the women leading the continent for digital streaming. Can you tell us about your experience as a woman in this male-dominated industry? So what I try to do is, you know, find role models in the industry who, women particularly, whether in the industry or outside of the industry, who are 
doing well and forging ahead, you know, and they're also not letting anything, anything, you know, phase them. And I also, I try to kind of embody that and, you know, emulate that. So yes, it is a problem, isn't it? Even music creators, female musicians, you know, the statistics, we kind of um, worked with media research on, you know, a report around women in music. And we found, you know, those um, disparities in terms of a lot of women also not, there, there isn't a lot of female artists in the industry or a lot of them kind of shy away because maybe they're not getting a lot of opportunities or a situation of, um, um, you know, sexual abuse, you know, so to say, and a lot of them don't come to the forefront. So it's it's not just, you know, for us, the music professionals or the music business execs, but also the creators on the other hand. All right, Chioma, well, thanks so much for joining us today, and we do wish you all the best.